this video we're going to take a peek at factorising simple quadratics. Now what I mean by a simple quadratic is one that only has a single x squared term in it. So it doesn't have something like 2x squared or 3x squared. So we're only going to be dealing with single x squared term quadratics. So factorising means to take a quadratic expression and place it into brackets. So it's the opposite of expanding. So let's get cracking. Okay, so as I said, it's the opposite of expanding. Uh, we use factorising to then go on and solve quadratic equations, but we'll check that out in a different video and really just try and nail factorising in this one. So again, as I said, we're only dealing with quadratics where we have a single x squared term, but we will check out what happens if b or c are equal to zero at all. So the first ones that we're going to check out then are when c is equal to zero. So if c is equal to zero that leaves us with a two term quadratic such as this guy here x squared plus 6x. So when we've got this kind of quadratic we only need a single pair of brackets uh, and we need to spot that we've got a common factor of x between our two terms. So if we've got a common factor of x, we bring that out the front of the brackets and then divide the two terms by x. So when we take that x out of the front, we divide x squared by x, which leaves us with that x, and then also divide 6x by x, which leaves us with 6. So x squared plus 6x factorises to x lots of x plus 6. Now you can always check your factorising answers by expanding the bracket back out and checking that you get the original expression. If you don't, something has gone wrong. So if you want to practice your expansions here, make sure that I'm right that x times x plus 6 does indeed expand to x squared plus 6x. Okay, let's go through some examples of these then. So x squared plus 13x. So again, We've got this common factor of x. So we take that out of the front of the brackets. Now x squared divided by x is going to leave us with an x. And then 13x divided by x will leave us with 13. So x squared plus 13x factorises to x times x plus 13. Okay, x squared plus 100x. Again, we've got a common factor of x, so that's going to factorise to x lots of x plus 100. Again, if you want to check your expanding, have a go there. Okay, so now let's look at the big bad boys and where we've got three terms in a quadratic. We'll come to b equaling 0 at the end of the video. That's an example of one of the special cases. So looking at this guy then, how does x squared plus 3x plus 2 factorise to x plus 2 times x plus 1? Well, let's check what happens if we expand this bracket out. So if we put one bracket across the top here, and one bracket down the side, then inside x times x is x squared, x times 2 is going to give us 2x, 1 times x just gives us x, and then 1 times 2 gives us 2. So if we bring our terms out of the table, we've got that single x squared, and then we've got 2x add 1x, which is 3x, and then we've got this 2 at the end, as we needed. So let's investigate where those things came from. This 2 at the end came from multiplying 2 and 1 together. So those are both the numbers in the brackets multiplied together and that's given us the number at the end of our quadratic. Now let's check out where our x terms came from. So we've got 1x there and 2x is there. Now together that's given us 3x which is going to be 1x plus 2x or the coefficient 3 is just given by doing 1 plus 2. So the amount of x in the middle has been achieved by adding the two numbers in the brackets. And that is indeed the rules for factorising quadratics.
Okay, so when you're given a quadratic in the form x squared plus bx plus c, and it can be factorized in the form x plus alpha times x plus beta, now bear in mind not every single quadratic can actually be factorized, but it would be pretty silly if you were given a question asking you to factorize something that can't be factorized. So when you're factorizing these quadratics uh, in the form x plus alpha times x plus beta, the rules are that alpha times beta will give you c, the number on its own at the end, and alpha plus beta will give you the coefficient of x in the middle, so b. Uh, so let's have a look at using these rules then. So there's four different scenarios that you can be put in when asked to factorize a quadratic. The first scenario is that everything inside your quadratic is positive as these guys here. So we've got a three term quadratic. Now we know then that we're gonna need two brackets and each bracket has a cheeky little X in it. Now to begin with, it's far more useful to us that we know the two brackets inside, or the two numbers inside the brackets are gonna multiply together to give us six. So then we can write down all the pairs of numbers that multiply together to give us six. So we got one and six, or two and three. Now because we've got a positive five in here, we also know everything inside of the brackets is gonna be positive. So what we're looking at in our pairs of numbers that multiply together to give us six, we're looking for a pair that add together to give us five. Now that's gonna be the two and the three. So x squared plus five x plus six factorizes to x plus two times x plus three. Okay, let's take a look at the second one then. So again, we can always start when we've got a single x squared by putting an x inside each bracket like this. Again, everything's positive. So we know both of our numbers inside the bracket are going to be positive. So this time, we know that they're going to multiply together to give us 20 and add together to give us 9. So let's write down the pairs of numbers that multiply together to give us 20. So we've got 1 and 20. We've got 2 and 10. 3 doesn't go in, but we've also got 4 and 5. So of those combinations, we're looking for the pair that adds together to give us the 9 in the middle, which is going to be the 4 and the 5. So x squared plus 9x plus 20 factorizes to x plus 4 times x plus 5. Remember, if at any point you want to uh, practice your expansions, check that I'm right. Okay, so we're going to do another 2 where everything is positive. So looking at this top one, x squared plus 7x plus 12. Start off with our two pairs of brackets with an x inside, everything's positive, so we can also confidently put plus signs in both brackets. So now we want our two numbers to multiply together to give us 12 and add together to give us 7. So let's write down our factors of 12. We've got 1 and 12, 2 and 6, or 3 and 4. So of those combinations, the pair that add together to give us 7 are 3 and 4. So x squared plus 7x plus 12 factorizes to x plus 3 times x plus 4. Okay, the last one then with everything being positive. x squared plus 10x plus 16. So standard set up to the job. Two pairs of brackets, each with an x. Everything's positive, so we can put our two plus signs in as well. So now we want our two numbers to multiply to 16 and add to 10. So our factors of 16 are 1 and 16, 2 and 8, or 4 and 4. So of those pairs, the one that adds together to 10 is 2 and 8. So that's our answer x squared plus 10x plus 16 factorizes to x plus 2 times x plus 8. Okay, scenario 2. 
So we might have a negative number in the middle and a positive number at the end. So the important thing to realise here is again that the number at the end comes from multiplying both the numbers in our brackets together. Now if we've got a negative number in the middle, remember that comes from adding our two numbers together. So the only possibility of our signs in our brackets here in this situation is that they're both negative. Because a negative times a negative will give us that positive at the end. So we can put a negative, that's a funny looking negative, we can put a negative inside of each bracket, like that. Now as soon as we know they're both negative, and we put our negative signs inside the brackets, we are again now just looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us 6, but add together to give us minus 5, or just 5. We don't need to worry about it being minus now, because we've put our minus signs inside of the brackets. So the numbers that multiply together to give us 6 are 1 and 6, or 2 and 3. So, 2 plus 3 is 5, so if these two are both negative, minus 2 and minus 3, minus 2, minus 3, does indeed give us that minus 5 in the middle, but minus 2 times minus 3 gives us that positive 6 at the end. Groovy. Okay, so we've got the same situation down here at the bottom. Again, we've got a negative number in the middle, with a positive at the end. So that tells us both numbers in our brackets are going to be negative. So now we need to uh, put the negative in the first bracket as well. Now we need to list our factors of 21. So we've got 1 and 21. Or we've got 3 and 7. So of those two we need the two that add together to give us 10. And that's going to be 3 and 7. So we're going to put a cheeky little 3 in there and a cheeky 7 in there. So x squared minus 10x plus 21 factorises to x minus 3 times x minus 7. Jobs are good enough. Okay, scenario 3. We might have a positive number in the middle with a negative number at the end. So if we've got that negative number at the end, Remember that he comes from multiplication, and the only way to get a negative number from multiplication is if we multiply positive by a negative. So one of our numbers here is going to be positive, and one is going to be negative. Again, though, we do need them to multiply together to give us that 2 at the end. So if we write down our combinations of numbers that multiply together to give us 2, we're quite limited. We've got 1 and 2. So now we need to work out which one of those is the positive guy and which one is the negative guy. Now if we have this positive number in the middle, then it's always the bigger number that's positive and the smaller number that's negative. So remember those two numbers add together to give us uh, the number in the middle. So if we've just got... Uh, that 1x in there, then we have got 2 plus minus 1, which does indeed give us that 1x in the middle. Okay, same situation down here. Positive in the middle, negative at the end. So again, one number is going to be positive and one number is going to be negative. So this might be a little bit trickier because 24 has many more factors than 2. Let's write them down there. So we've got 1 and 24. We've got 2 and 12. We've got 3 and 8. Or we've got 4 and 6. So we've got 5x in the middle. And we know that one of our numbers is going to be positive and one is going to be negative. We do know but because we've got a positive number in the middle, it's the bigger of the two, and it's going to be positive. So if we check out our relationships here between our biggest number and our smallest number in our pairs, 24 minus 1 would be 23, so it's not that. 12 minus 2 
is 10, so it's not that. 8 minus 3 would indeed give us the 5. So, x squared plus 5x minus 24 factorises to x plus 8 times x minus 3. Okay, scenario number 4. We might have a negative number in the middle and a negative number at the end. So whenever you've got the negative number at the end, you always have one positive number and one negative number. Sorry, I'm not sure where that one's coming from. So we always have one positive and one negative number. So again, though, our two numbers do need to multiply together to give us two minus two. But that's going to happen because we've now got our plus and minus in the brackets. So our factors of two are one and two. Now, to get this negative sign in the middle this time, the bigger of the two numbers is now the negative one. So we're going to have x plus one times x minus two. So then if we do minus one, sorry, minus two, add one, that brings us up to minus one and will give us that minus one x in the middle. Okay, let's check out this guy down here, x squared minus 2x minus 15. So the same situation again, we know one's going to be positive and one is going to be negative. Now if we list the factors of 15, we've got 1 and 15 or 3 and 5, so we're quite limited. And now we want uh, to get a minus 2 in the middle. So now we're looking at doing the smaller number, take away the bigger number in our pairs. So 1 minus 15 would give us minus 14, but 3 minus 5 would give us that minus 2. So the 3 is positive and the 5 is negative. So when you have that situation, you've got a negative number in the middle and a negative at the end. One of your brackets has a positive number, one of your brackets has a negative number, but the negative, in this case, is the bigger of the two. Okay, to finish off, we're going to take a quick quick peek at two special cases, but I'm going to do separate videos on them to make sure we cover them really well, but we'll just introduce them now. So we've got one, one of the two special cases. is called the perfect square. Uh, let's see why. So if we look at this top guy, x squared plus 6x plus 9, well, it's a three-term quadratic, so we're going to need two brackets. So, let's, uh, everything's positive, so we can put a plus sign in both. Now our conditions are the two numbers need to multiply together to give us 9, or add together to give us 6. So if we write down our factors of 9, we've got 1 and 9, or 3 and 3. So of those two pairs, it's 3 and 3, that adds together to give us 6. So x squared plus 6x plus 9 can be factorised to give x plus 3 times x plus 3. Now the reason that this is called the perfect square is that we can actually write that as a single bracket squared x plus 3 times x plus 3 is indeed x plus 3 squared. So whatever number we plug in for x, that is always going to give us a square number. Okay, let's check out another example. So this time we've got a negative number in the middle, but a positive at the end. So that tells us both brackets have got a negative number in that. So looking at 25, if we list its factors, we've got 1 and 25 or 5 and 5. So we need the two numbers uh, to add together to give us 10 or minus 10. But remember again, as soon as we put our two negative signs in the brackets, the minus part of us adding it together, adding the two numbers together, has already been taken care of. So 5 plus 5 is 10. Minus 5 plus minus 5 will give us that minus 10 that we need. And then again, that can be spruced up into x minus 5 all squared like that so again that will always give us a square number cracking okay so the other special case and this is when b is equal to zero this is called the difference of two squares 
so I'm not going to go into it too heavily here, just introducing it. So the difference of squares quadratic, you've always got an x squared term, there's never an x term in the middle, and it's always minus a square number at the end. So here we've got x squared minus 25, 25 is a square number, so this guy would factorise to x plus 5 times x minus 5. So then the plus 5x and the minus 5x that we would get if we were to expand that out, cancel each other out. And if we look at this chap at the bottom, x squared minus 36, that would factorise to x plus 6 times x minus 6. Again, the plus 6 and the minus 6 cancel out the x terms in the centre. So I will do separate videos on those two things and how to solve uh, equations involving them and that leads me on to say that be sure to check out the next part of this video which is going to be using factorizing to solve quadratic equations hope it's helpful guys cheers